Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2Design. We all know that Blender can do almost everything, and creating a short movie is where you make the most out of it. But I would say that the challenge in making a short movie is not about the tool, but it's more about decision making and organization. In this video, I will explain you how I was able to create the short movie to promote the Art of Effective Rigging 2nd edition in only 2 months. Stay till the end of the video, I have a little fun story about it. First of all, when I started the teaser production, the characters were already modeled and rigged since they were done during the course production. Like any other project, making a short movie is about going from big to small. And the big picture here was the idea. Kibali, the gorilla, is trying to retrieve the stone of rigging knowledge stolen by the machines. During the last three months of the course production, I was already writing down ideas and descriptions of the shots. I wanted to create and then turn it into a script. Just a description of the different sequences and shots. I started the production on the 15th of January. First, I decided to storyboard everything directly in Blender. I feel more comfortable with 3D than 2D drawing, and it allows me to already work on compositions and camera angles using very rough environments blocking. That way, I could let change with Lush, also known as Lolly Pump Man, on the readability and quality of the future shots. From there, I made an animatic, basically timing the storyboard in After Effects and labeling each shot. We used the following naming convention. Sequence number underscore shot number underscore version and all Blender and production files were named that way too. I used an Excel sheet to keep track of all the shot progressions and drop some notes and ideas. From there, I started limiting every shot. Each file was created from the corresponding storyboard Blender file, allowing me to save time. I was using a very raw background, but with enough detail that I can compose my frames. The animation were first blocked out with very few but important keyframes and then refined and detailed bit by bit. At the end of each day of production, I would play blast the shot and add them to my edit in After Effects so we could see part of the animatic becoming actual animations. I will show the shots to Lush and Pablo Fournier from the Blender Studio so that they can give me feedbacks and supportive words and energy. I had a clear vision of each shot even though they evolved during the animation process. The first shot, western style. Then I absolutely wanted to create a freefall shot, as in Captain Laserhawk trailer by Bobby Pills. Same for the rush forward, I didn't have a specific reference this time, but the will to create something that felt like an anime with fast motion and extreme camera angles. For the Blades row, I referred to Z Mask of Death animation by one of my favorite animators of all, Ryan Woodward. The side scrolling combo shot was inspired by TMNT Mutant Mayhem fighting sequence. The Bullet Dodge was inspired by one of my previous animations. Yep, pretentiously and the little robot sketch by one of the Avengers scene. As the initial idea was Kibali would kick the robot out, but then I changed my mind and chose something a little funnier. So most shots were fully animated when I started working on the environments. I initially planned to model everything by myself, but I quickly changed my mind, as it would be unmanageable in such a short amount of time. I chose kit bashing. I bought some cliff and stone assets along with these amazing sci-fi assets. From there, I just needed to populate my scene following the blocked out background. My best advice here is that you should focus on what we see. You don't need to model things that are out of the camera or create details that are too far away. I sculpted the ground in this shot directly from the camera in most cases, using a subdivided plane with a multi-res modifier. 
Talking about sculpting, my friend at CG Boost released a new course, Blender Sculpting for Beginners, and it's free. They also provide other more advanced sculpting courses, along with their new Robotic Planet course, which is awesome, and their Environment Creation course. Definitely a lot of good things if you want to create your own short movie in Blender. Check the link in the description below. For the sci-fi interior, I created modules using kit bashing and rigged the door. All the modules were then linked in each shot, allowing me to edit the assets in the source file and get all the shots automatically updated. Here is how the files were organized. I created a Dropbox folder so that I could share the progress with Lush for the animation, but also with Gabrielle for the sound design and Thomas for the VFX. I created an asset folder containing all the environment Blender files. All environments were organized in collections and sub-collections that were properly named and labeled. For the same reason, all the character rigs also had their specific folder and were all linked in the different shots. If you want to learn more about linking, check out this video. I will probably update it soon. I then created a folder per specialty where we could drop the production's assets like sound or hand-drawn VFX. Each shot has its own Blender file and the corresponding render folder from which I could source the rendered PNG sequences and import them in After Effects. I used the alpha version of EV Next to render everything and kept the compositing as minimal as possible. I generally try to get the best directly out of the raw render using basing lighting setup. If you want to learn more about this, let me know in the comments. And if you're enjoying the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. With this consistent organization, it's easy to keep track of the production. In After Effects, I will label each shot and display the current shot frame number and the global edit frame number. This way, I could easily send myself notes like, oh, there's a glitch on frame 228. I often send myself emails to remember things, so having a proper frame number to identify the shot was really helpful. And it also greatly helped me to direct the sound design and VFX. Could you make the impact on frame whatever a little louder? Could you hold the muzzle for one additional frame on frame whatever, etc. The sound design started as soon as the animation was done, and the edit was almost final. This way, Gabriel will not need to retime the sound and could work as fast as possible. The 2 VFX were done during the last 10 days of production. Thankfully, I could have Thomas at my side to make some of the VFX. I prioritized the essential VFX first, like muzzle flashes, bullet impacts, and lightning, because they were important to understand the shots. Then all the other VFX were unhoped for. What I mean by that is, we would discuss and say that would be cool if there was saliva on this shot, for example. I'd love if the blade was raising dust as it flies forward. But these VFX were not needed, and I started them once every single essential feature was done. So basically the dust trade was done three days before the release. I comped everything in After Effects, added a video grain effect to give it a more cinematic look, and it was also used in the very first teaser, that's why I wanted to have it here. I pushed a bit the contrast with curve, and the little twist is that I slightly color graded each shot with warm versus cold gradient. The warm side of the frame is always where Kibale is, or where it comes from, while the cold side is on the robots. It improved the contrast between organic and synthetic characters. I also made the motion design in After Effects. The short was released on the 4th of March. The music was finished the day before. I worked almost 7 days a week to get it done, from 10 to 16 hours a day. And still to this date, I'm so proud of this short and I think it's the best piece of art i ever done in my life. And the feedback from the community and the industry has been incredible. So one of the most incredible story and feedback I had was to know that Ton Rosendahl, the creator of Blender, at the Blender Studio, got into the animator's office to show them uh, this animated short. 
and he was saying to them that it was great. I know that because uh, Pablo Fournier is a friend and he's working at the Blender studio and he told me that tones came in. And then Sibrin told me that almost the whole studio has seen uh, the short and loved it. So I was really humbled and super happy that the people behind uh, Blender saw that short movie and enjoyed it. And that, my friends, is a great reward, to be honest. This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Cheers!